Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about four tips for new blockchain startups. All right, so before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And as always, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. So let's talk about four tips for new blockchain startups, okay? And I'm gonna actually give you some free advising just like I would if you were working with me as your advisor, okay? So this is gonna be some free advice and if you actually want to you know, work with me as your advisor, you can find my email address down in the description below. All right, so let's, talk, let's break this down into four tips, all right? The first tip is going to be know the problem that you're trying to solve with your company your project your application right how are you going to use the blockchain and do you actually need it to solve this problem okay this is a really common theme and i'm going to give you some questions that you can ask yourself right some sort of diagnostic questions to get the wheels turning to show how you can use this in your business okay so what problem do you need to solve with the blockchain so what are the good aspects of the blockchain what's the value add right well, the two big things that I see a lot are trustlessness, you know, transparency. Um, these are big things that people try to leverage the blockchain for inside their business. But let's pull up uh, a, a report here. This report was put out by Deloitte, right? They did a survey of uh, a whole lot of companies and asked, you know, uh, lots of questions about how they're using blockchain for their business. Like 95% of these companies said, yes, they're considering blockchain in some way for their business. And part of the survey response was, you know, hey, what do you hope to accomplish with the blockchain? Okay, so I'm going to actually look at those here. 32% said that they uh, want a greater speed as opposed to traditional systems. So that makes sense, especially for financial transactions, right? On the blockchain, you can move a million dollars just as fast as you can move one dollar. And that's not necessarily true for traditional financial systems, okay? So 28% said that they wanted to find new business models and revenue sources, right? So basically, completely new solutions um, that are going to be made possible by the blockchain that probably weren't possible before. And that's going to open up new revenue models for these existing businesses, okay? And so that may be, you know, how you build your entire startup at all is like a completely new business that solves a problem in a novel way with the blockchain, okay? So greater security, lower risk. This is a big thing for a lot of people. They think that blockchains are going to be more secure in a lot of ways than our traditional financial systems or not necessarily financial, but just traditional systems at all that require some sort of security for their users, okay? And last is lower cost. And I, I'm assuming a lot of this is for infrastructure. So if you can offload some of your AWS, you know, resources and dial back that bill a little bit by putting some more things on the blockchain, that could potentially save you money in the long run for your business, all right? And that could be a lot of, you know, that could be good news for a startup who is, you know, bootstrapped and it doesn't have a lot of cash. All right, so those are questions you need to answer when you're trying to figure out how you're gonna solve your problem with the blockchain. Okay, so tip number two is know your customer, all right? And specifically know what your customer actually wants and is looking for. And that's gonna be critical when you decide how to use the blockchain in your business, okay? So I'm gonna say there's a fork in the road here, two real options. Either your customer really desires like as much decentralization as possible, or they're just going to need to get some benefit out of the blockchain. That's sort of like two different categories here, all right? So if your customer wants you know as much decentralization as possible, so what do I mean by that, right? So basically, they don't like the idea of you know the traditional system in any way. They don't like centralization at all. They don't want anyone to have any amount of control, right? You see this a lot with really hardcore early adopter crypto users who like got into crypto because they don't want anyone to have power, right? They basically want something to run autonomously and get away from it. Okay, so. You can do this, but this is going to be a very small market of people who are actually going to use your product. But if you can do it really well, there's going to be a lot of demand for it, okay? So a good example would be like an email client that, you know, really drills in on encrypted emails. Like everyone who uses email doesn't necessarily care about sending encrypted emails. But if you, send, if you have an email product that allows you to have really good encryption and always send messages like that, there's going to be a market for that. So that's a, good, that's a good analogy, right? If that's what your business model is, then you need to you know, find out how much decentralization you can really achieve and how you can do it, right? Look into other stuff like IPFS, right? So there's all kinds of ways that you might need to figure that out for your business, okay? So the other camp, the other sort of set of users is people who don't really care that the blockchain's actually being used. They just wanna know what the benefit is, all right, to them as an end user, okay? So don't talk about too much blockchain in your marketing. You know, you don't really need to, the user doesn't need to know they're using the blockchain. In fact, you wanna hide it from their awareness probably as much as possible, right? 
All they care about is the benefit. This kind of goes back to the classic like Wolf of Wall Street scene where, you know, he says, sell me this pen. If you've ever seen this movie, you know, he says, sell me this pen. And the guy starts talking about how great the pen is and like all the features. It's the classic features versus benefits uh, idea, right? Don't talk about all the features. Just talk about the benefits. They don't care about, you know, how the blockchain is secure and blah, 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 blah. Like they just want to know what it does for them. And that's what you need to drive home in your product, right? And you might want to be able to verify some things on the blockchain, like show them the transaction hashes, like hidden somewhere in their profile if they really want to know. But most people will not care at all. And if that's you, you're going to have some sort of hybridized system where you're only using the blockchain for what you actually need to use the blockchain for. Everything else, you're going to probably have centralized web servers. You're probably going to still have AWS infrastructure or something like that, right? And you're going to just offload what needs to be on the blockchain on the blockchain and everything else. You're probably going to want to keep the same. All right, the next tip is to use the right tool for the job. And this is something you only can answer after you've answered number two, which is like know your customer, okay? So whenever you've narrowed down what your customer wants, then you're going to figure out the tools, right? So if you have a very general purpose audience like category number two that I just talked about that doesn't care about you know the blockchain, then you're basically going to just do what I said. You're gonna still have traditional web infrastructure, but you're gonna only use the blockchain for what you have to use the blockchain for, okay? And if you're in that other category of you know you want full decentralization or as much as possible, you're gonna have to make some trade-offs and compromises for what's actually possible right now in technology, but find out what, you know, is most important to your users and start there and then work towards as much you know decentralization as possible. And you're gonna wanna look at tools like IPFS or something like that to try to do like serialized things and store them off chain in a decentralized way, right? There's a lot of creative problem solving that has to happen when you're doing this, okay? So the other important thing is you know figuring out what blockchain you wanna use. And for most people, if they don't know the answer to this question, I usually just tell them to default to Ethereum. Why? Because it's a really great general purpose blockchain. You can do stuff with it now. There's lots of people actually running the network. It's the number two you know, market cap cryptocurrency right now. It's, it's, it's a good choice, right? There's lots of stuff you can do right now with it. There's a lot of developers who know how to build stuff with Ethereum. The developer tools are really good if you have to train new developers. Um, there's lots of learning resources now, especially with my channel to teach new developers how to use Ethereum, right? So this is really great, especially if you're just trying to use the blockchain as a settlement layer, uh, like I talked about in the second strategy where you know, you're still maintaining a lot of traditional web infrastructure and maybe a mobile app or whatever, and you just need to use the blockchain to you know, basically uh, as a blockchain component in your application. Ethereum is a really good choice for this, okay? So um, if you don't want to use Ethereum or you, you, know, you want to ask some other questions, you need to figure out how much data you're going to store, what your transactions per second needs to be, like what your transaction volume is. There's lots of questions you need to ask there, okay? So you can definitely look at other options, but those are some things you want to consider. Um, how new is the technology? Are there actually developer tools for it? Are there actually developers? Uh, especially a lot of these new, tech, these new blockchains that come up uh, aren't quite as widely used as they might advertise, okay? And you want to be careful about that. All right, tip number four is that you you need talent, okay? And this kind of goes without saying, but I have to say it because sometimes people aren't really actually doing this, okay? You need to have people working for you who know what they're doing, right? Whether they're contractors or employees, right? Whether they're blockchain developers or they're your advisors, right? And these people need to know what they're doing, right? And this can be hard, especially for developers because there's not really that many uh, good blockchain developers out there right now. I talk on my channel a lot How about how the demand has really exceeded the supply, okay? And usually a good first start is to find somebody who's really good and then they can have other people do some, you know, more, uh, regular tasks underneath them, right? And sometimes you can even train developers if you have to. You know, some of the more basic blockchain tasks can be taught to other developers. Um, I work that way a lot where basically I solve, you know, the really hard blockchain problems and then I delegate things to other developers to, you know, accomplish this. And they're not always, you know, as well versed in blockchain, but that's okay as long as they're working with someone who has a lot more expertise and experience than them, right? Not every developer in your team necessarily has to necessarily be a blockchain expert. It's just best to have at least one really good blockchain expert on your team. And it also depends on, you know, your business solution, but that's a good first start, okay? So also, you know, I talk about advising. You know, I do a lot of advising. You need advisors in your company, especially if you don't really have a lot of experience with blockchain, okay? So the advisors are going to have, you know, the roadmap and the resources. So you want an advisor who's walked the kinds of roads that you're trying to walk, who's been there and can show you how to get from point A to point B with their roadmap, all right? 
And they also need to have resources, okay? So if they don't know the answer or can't give you the answer really in good practice, then they can connect you to someone who can. So I'll give you an example. I work with a lot of people who are trying to solve uh, legal problems inside their company with blockchain. You know, it's a new time. There's lots of questions. I can't always answer these questions. I, I really shouldn't answer these questions because I'm not a lawyer, right? I can give you an idea of what I think the answer is, but it would be wrong for me to give you a final answer. So what I do is connect you to other legal representation that I've worked with in the past, right? And that's sort of a benefit that you get from me uh, when I work as your advisor. And if you're looking for an advisor, that's the kind of thing you should also be looking for. Someone who can give you those kinds of connections that you lack, right? All right, so those are the four tips uh, for new blockchain startups. So I hope I've given you some value, some questions to consider. Um, again, if you're interested in working with me as your advisor, you can find my email address down below in this video. All right, so that's all I got for today, guys. Again, hope you all like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And as always, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. All right, so until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.